Hello everyone. Just on my way to work. Wanna... I didn't have time to make videos and updates on the international geopolitics, international situation, because I I got busy with doing videos about the political situation in Portugal. Big clown circus, by the way. That's what we, you get when you elect this. Uh, someone say far right. I wouldn't exactly characterize them like that. I would uh, characterize them character, characterize them more like uh, a bunch of opportunistic low-life criminals, crooks, con men and the like you know this this kind of people with no moral compass and no values people whose virtues whose virtues are only in pretending so that's how i would characterize this kind of right of course the left likes to scream nazis far right and there are some within this horde of people but i must recognize that they are a minority Anyway, I didn't want to talk about that, but Portugal is going to go through that. Uh, as something we will have to face. Uh, and uh, we know politicians have bad reputation, right? Everywhere. I mean, I've, everyone heard this, have been hearing this since this kind of democracies exist. It's common people to say, oh, politicians are all this, are all that. And uh, what I realized is this is a great cover for crook politicians in detriment of the good ones. And there are good ones. Because when you say, oh, they're all crooks, and it's not true. It is not true. If you leave the media, if you just think for yourself isolate yourself from the sound bites live your life not everywhere I'm just using my own example of course I live in Portugal it's uh, Western Europe the ass of Europe it's European Union and I remember when I was little and I compare it with uh, now okay some things and some mainly some perspectives they be, they became uh, not true we had some like some hopes that things would be better in certain aspects but they have improved in many others and for example in portugal when you have a huge percentage of the population that can hardly read or write in, mid, in the middle of the 70s or that cannot read or write it's not hardly it's that cannot read or write illiterate and now you look at it and it's completely different it doesn't mean that they are not morons or anything like that but at least they can read and write <laughs> not just, just a term when you have people that don't die at birth the, both baby and the mother those rates are way 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 down when you have public schools everywhere when you have a lot of things that people get for granted and sometimes they don't notice and you have a lot of roads everywhere and everyone has a car and this kind of thing things are much better right but in the side that is, I do not agree that it is better is that for example when we look at the past generations, when we look, for example, at the baby boomers and one or two <clears throat> generations after, a lot of them were able, if they lived in Europe, they were able with only a paycheck, provide for the family, own their house, make vacation, some owned more than a house, happens a lot in Northern Europe in some cases in some countries 
and right now these opportunities are less less and less and right now it's really a calamity because a youngster can hardly move out of the parents home even if he works <laughs> so yeah Ah, all of this to say that within this environment of young people not seeing opportunities the ones that their parents or grandparents had just by living their day-to-day -day job their month-to-month -month paycheck uh, it starts to settle an environment which is fertile for this kind of promises by this kind of right-wing populist parties and uh, the problem for me is that I would never expect this to happen when for example about 20 years ago when I was a young man in my 20s I used to think that uh, Okay, now only a few youngsters speak English. In the future, everyone will speak English and other languages. Everyone will never will have no pre prejudice towards any race or different people. This is things from the past, from the 60s, from the dictatorship. Uh, people will be very knowledgeable because technology is providing us with every available a lot of uh, a million available channels to attain this knowledge for free and I, I had a really good perspective on the future really good uh, I was optimistic about the future well it turns out that <laughs> the key the key <laughs> the information bit that I was referring to all the technology we have that gives us the possibility so many possibilities these are just used in the most moronic and I mean I'm, moronic is like I look at the internet I go I do a little bit a little bit of scroll not too much because then I I feel like puking a little bit of scroll on the Instagram and Facebook whatever and it's just sick it's just the, the all the movies and series about zombies it looks like that they became true <laughs> people just fighting arguing against each other and the problem is that there is no reason in these arguments most of the times even worse than that there is no knowledge in these arguments and <laughs> And this is, this is what, in my opinion, provided the fertile ground, if you will, to, to sow these new populist ideas, which are uh, very pleasant to people who are very egoistic-minded, very individualistic-minded, do not see any prospects in the labor market of a stable future who are always looking for this influencer this Instagrammer or this whatever social network is on lifestyle and wants the same and so this reminds to me no knowledge and a big ambition for material display it's a bit like of a ghetto mentality isn't it I mean all those drug dealers using gold chains and fancy cars so it seems to me that our culture Western culture is heading that way and <laughs> which it's a lot of contradictions in, in these ideas uh, but but please bear with me for a while so in the meantime, <laughs> while all this <laughs> individualistic mentality flourishes, you have another side of a, 
of a, of a, another also individualistic but uh, more apologist more fan of conservative ideas people that suddenly they are very happy in their childhood I mean not much is lacking they go to school they don't learn that much they become very ignorant and one day they wake up and say hmm maybe in the dictatorship times th those were the times because now I don't see <laughs> any hope I have a degree I cannot find a stable job I cannot find a, a source of income that allows me to have the lifestyle I want so those were the times where everything was neat and organized and everything functioned properly and so I think both of these ideas are like function like a poison to a lot of youngsters I do not want to engage in excess generalization generalization because I know that a, a lot of good bright thoughtful minds all over the world but even the I'm afraid that sometimes even I see intelligent good good intelligent youngsters just waiting wasting their their minds their talents their capabilities in pursuing these values either liberal individualist conservative conservative individualist one of those some fascistic the ones with the uh, one screw less in their head <laughs> but but yeah this this seems to be the trend and how do I know this you can ask me have you been studying have you been have you did some investigation work academic work with the proper tools for statistics studying study groups and questionnaires and all this no I just look at the polls the voting polls and then you can see you can go through the programs and the propaganda of each political party or candidates that uh, propose themselves to be to become in charge you look at uh, the menu of proposals from, from all the parties and then you look at the choices <laughs> and so and it becomes clear what governs the what values are increasing increasingly governing our society but more worryingly affecting more youngsters than any other uh, age group and uh, and then and then you see actually people of course uh, i have to there's one one side i haven't mentioned yet which is corporations big corporations they are according to me uh, very much responsible for this environment they are the biggest indoctrinators of our times they manage slowly and uh, forgive me my English is not fluent it's not very fluent well it's never very fluent but today it's a little bit worse anyway corporations the way they shape our society and corporations are just big groups of people just fighting to extract as much and give as less as possible to society this is how corporations work nowadays so they get rid of government regulations the banks get rid of regulations the finance get rid of regulations and because they have all the money money becomes power and so they bit by bit go and influence every aspect of society every aspect I mean they can even in nowadays so <laughs> so uh, when all the information is available all the millions of channels on YouTube and other platforms are available now and you think oh but this is much better because now it's democratic everyone can have their own channel for example like I have my own channel but when I look at this it's just it's I myself I'm a bit foolish for believing this not a bit completely foolish because 
nothing can guarantee that these guys do not get in the same game but with some difference is that they have much by far much more power than the majority it used to be that the majority when they got together they would overthrow the minority elite but now with the information information sphere being like it is it's very prone to be monopolized because they, they can be only a few individuals and they can control easily the main narratives on the whole internet and the problem you can argue that before it was TV and radio already controlled by only a few yeah but people talked more with each other and when sometimes underground words paper written sometimes forbidden they would pass hand by hand and they would gain power and they would be outside of the control of these big platforms they would be truly free per persecuted of course but they would resist because they were outside of this grid of control so yeah i do establish this connection if i if you allow me to simplify this that the power remains in the same hands but now with more possibilities to influence the population and the narratives of course you can also argue that now we are going in the direction of multipolarity i'm sorry so there are more uh, poles uh, groups of power in the world that is true but within each group within each sphere there are clear monopolies and even there are monopolies that just go across some spheres of power for example europe europe has no power in this regard I mean, just go and uh, go and listen to Yanis Varoufakis. He makes a really good point about this techno feudalism. People are being influenced, and so what shocks me the most, the end result of this, because I always thought, okay, you can throw all the bullshit you want. In the end, people will see. Maybe they will make some mistakes. Maybe maybe they fall for it for a while, but then they will wake up and so on and so on it's not gonna happen it is not gonna happen when you have evidence being defeated by creed by faith by simple blind faith that is I don't find much hope so yeah this is the thought and I know it's a bit boring and I'm rambling like always when I'm driving my car and, well generally I ramble I go to, I'm a rambler in the internet forgive me for that I don't get any money from this you know that so I really have not much pressure but what hurts me the most to see this the, the society taking this direction is the group of people in all societies in all countries that are the, the engine, the force, the driving force of these societies, which are the working and the creative, working creative and all together, the working people, they many times nowadays, because of this excess of information and ideas, they tend to shoot themselves in the foot. So for example, when a youngster is told you have to stick together and we have to demand what is rightfully ours and then the guy goes and thinks twice maybe if I leave this group and just work by myself because I was told that I must believe in myself and only myself I can go and maybe please the, the powerful ones and then they will reward me basically this is a rewarding system for bitches and with this mindset 
unions get destroyed and why are unions heavily targeted <laughs> you should ask that because unions work unions are the sole hope of workers workers together it doesn't matter how many kilometers they are apart if they stick together if they make a stance the other side has no chance simple as that that is why there is always this constant imprinting of ideas individualistic ideas demonizing of unions always the glorification of the self-made man the glorification of the high profit company because we need very high profit companies so they can trickle down their profits to the society which we know it's utter fake but portugal is in a stage of understanding this a little bit behind forgive me portuguese are listening to me but i think it is like this because these ideas are just gaining ground among the youth they think they can be self-made men they think uh, socialist ideas are like the devil that just want to steal their gains so they have not the minimum understanding of who is actually stealing the gains of the workers is it enough rambling well for now as I'm almost, I'm about to arrive to at work I see you on the next one